everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me. Really Big Plant. I have been dealing with some fungus gnats in my apartment recently, more of them than I would like to see. And if you've got plants, you've probably got fungus gnats or have had them at some point. So I want to talk today all about fungus gnats. I'm going to tell you basically everything I can think of and everything that I know about fungus gnats and how to control them, prevent them, um, treat them, when you should be worried about them, when you shouldn't. I pulled out every single product in my plant care arsenal that I could think of that I ever seen anyone talk about in relation to fungus gnats and some of these things are products that I recommend for treatment and some of them are not. When you do get fungus gnats they are such a nuisance they swarm around your face and actually it's not an accident it might seem like there's a lot of them because they're always around your face but the truth is they are swarming around your face probably and that's because they're attracted to CO2 which is something that we exhale and so they find your face holes. So I think I've been having a lot of fungus gnats because I maybe made a mistake with my soil um, storage. So last time I opened a big bag of soil, when I opened it, I noticed that it was full of mold and I decided that moving forward, I would try to open up the bags of soil when I brought them home and let them be open so that they could dry out. I left the bag open for a while and just didn't monitor it. And I think a huge fungus gnat population grew up into my bag of soil. When I jostled the bag, so many fungus gnats came out. And I think that they maybe found their way into my bag of moist soil. I mean, I don't know if they came from the soil or if they came from my apartment. I don't really think it makes sense to play the blame game with fungus gnats because they kind of just are everywhere and they will go wherever there's moisture. So my first physical fungus gnat killing step that I've been doing, because I think most of their population has actually been coming out of this bag. Um, and I've noticed that just closing up the bag isn't enough to eliminate them because when I open it, a lot of them will come flying back out. So what I've been doing is every time before I open this bag and before I use it, um, I try to, you know, slowly squeeze the air out with it shut mostly so that bugs can't escape. I mean, but if some do, it's okay. And then I just smash on the bag and squish all the air out and squish all of the bugs that might be in there. So I've been squeezing this bag of soil. I've used most of it at this point, but I figured I should show this to you. I realized last time I was doing this. One of the frustrating things that I've noticed that people always say about fungus gnats is that when you have a population of fungus gnats, it probably means that you're overwatering your plants. And what I wanna say about that is that I don't think that that's necessarily true. I think that if you are watering your plants a normal, amount like an appropriate amount that keeps your plants happy and healthy and adequately watered you probably have some fungus gnats like i know that i'm not an overwaterer, and i get tons of fungus gnats sometimes so don't be too hard on yourself if you hear things that are saying that you have fungus gnats because you're overwatering your plants that's not necessarily true so when you work retail you develop lines that you say because you learn some things go over well with people and some things don't and one of my favorite things to say to people which is super annoying of me is when people come in describing this situation where they've got all these little flies and they're very concerned I say to them sounds like you've got plants and <laughs> it can go either way some people hate it and I they're in a bad mood that I said that to them and some people give me a big tip because they feel like it's jovial and we're having a good time um but uh, basically fungus gnats are something that you're gonna have if you've got enough plants. Um, I think once you hit like 10 plants, you're probably gonna have some fungus gnats. The most populous type of living thing are flies. This is something that really stuck with me that I learned from one of my horticulture professors when I was studying pest management. She said that if an alien species were to come down to earth and to randomly select a living organism, most likely it'll be a fly. There are more types of flies than any other type of living thing. And we know that there are so many types of flies that are not even classified. So the fact that you might have some fungus gnats every now and then is really no surprise at all. So don't sweat it if you've got some fungus gnats. But let's get into some more detailed information about what they are and what to do about them. So when we talk about insects, we usually talk about their entire taxonomical order. So in taxonomy or in classification of all living things, we have 
the order, which then contains the family, and then the genus, and then the species. So when we talk about plants, we are usually talking about them at the level of genus and species. So for example, philodendron lichens here is the genus philodendron, and the species is heteracium. Um, heteracium lichens is the name of this particular cultivar. And the genus philodendron belongs to the aeroid family. So that family is Araceae. And Araceae, the family, itself belongs to the order, um, let's see if I can remember what it's called, Alismataceae. I'll put the name down on the screen because I can't quite remember what it is. But basically, it's a really huge order of plants. Usually when we're talking about plants, we're concerned with something much more specific. But because insects are so diverse and so populous and so numerous, we are usually discussing them at the level of their taxonomical order and are usually not naming species. So fungus gnats belong to an order of insects called diptera and it's diptera, um, etymologically speaking, which means two wings. And they comprise an order of insects that are known as the true flies. So there are lots of flying insects, but the ones that have truly two wings and a really traditional fly shape, like when you picture a fly as just kind of like a dot with like, you know, two little wings that form a little triangle overall or like a little heart shape, those are the true flies, the diptera. And fungus gnats themselves belong to six or maybe seven families within that order. So diptera, the true flies, are a type of insect that go through a complete metamorphosis, which means that they go through the life stages of being an egg and then a larva, and then a pupa, and then an adult. So usually as kids, we learn about butterflies to learn about this concept of insect metamorphosis. Um, and so butterflies go through a complete metamorphosis, just like these true flies. Those stages are, of course, egg, we know what eggs are. And then the larval stage of a butterfly is a caterpillar that eats leaves and has one set of behaviors. And then it goes through a pupal stage where it's in the cocoon. And then they emerge into their adult stage as a butterfly. And as an adult butterfly, this same organism has really different feeding behaviors and lifestyle behaviors that are completely different from two life phases ago when it was a larva as a caterpillar. So like butterflies and any insect that goes through a complete metamorphosis, they have these different life stages where they need different things. And this is important because when we talk about pest management, we really need to know about all these different life stages because there are different ways that we need to take action against insects in their different life phases in order to eradicate them or control them. So fungus gnats, their entire life cycle is about a month. They spend like a week as an adult where they fly around. So usually fungus gnats only want to eat fungus. They're called fungus gnats because they want to eat fungus. And this is true about them at all stages of their life cycle. Well, the feeding stages of their life cycle, which is the larval phase and then the adult phase. And they want to eat mold. But if there isn't a lot of mold available, but eggs have been laid, fungus gnat larvae can be harmful to new plants, to baby plants. They will eat rotting roots, decaying plant matter, and sometimes even new plant shoots. But usually the fungus gnats are only there to eat like little decaying matter in the soil and fungus that's there on the soil as well. So while the larval stage of fungus gnats could potentially do some damage to new plant shoots and to plant roots. Sometimes in order to complete their life cycle, fungus gnats need a moist environment in order to live and in order to develop into an adult that can then lay eggs. The easiest way to combat fungus gnats is to just have an overall drier environment, which involves letting your plants dry out a little bit more between watering. So when we talk about pest management, it's important to differentiate between prevention and treatment. And sometimes there's a little bit of overlap between those categories, but a lot of times there actually is kind of a, a big important conceptual difference. So the main first course of action when you have fungus gnats is to just put down the watering can and let your plants get dry between waterings. And if this is not something that you do because you're somebody who typically likes to keep your plant soil a little bit moist and you never see interruptions in growth because you keep your plants very well watered, this can be something that can be a little bit difficult to transition into doing. So what you can do is 
gradually try to acclimate your plants to a little bit less water. And the way you do that is when it's watering day, wait one more day before you give the plant water. But there's certain plants you shouldn't wait to water. You can try bottom watering your plants. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's just when you take your plant that is planted in a pot with a drainage hole and you set the whole plant into a dish of water and allow the water to wick up from the bottom. And if you're trying to use it as a fungus gnat treatment, it's important that you remove the plant from the dish of water before the surface of the soil gets wet. So that way you can allow the surface to be completely bone dry and if you consistently bottom water your plants this way, um, for a couple of waterings, usually that will eliminate a fungus gnat population because there's no moist surface of the soil for them to live in. Fungus gnats, as adults, will fly around until they find a good place to lay eggs, and if they don't find a good place, they just die without reproducing. So keeping your plants drier is a really easy way to keep a fungus gnat population at bay. The next easy solution that I have for fungus gnat control is is so simple that it seems silly, but it works really well, and that is airflow. So <laughs> this is a fan here and if you keep fans on inside or keep your windows open, usually the fungus gnat population is controlled just because they're really weak flyers and if you've got a breeze blowing around indoors, a lot of times the fungus gnats can't fly well enough to spread. Um, and so if you keep a fan on and you identify a couple plants that have fungus gnat populations and you just treat those plants alone. You can get rid of a fungus gnat population pretty quick by just keeping up a breeze. Usually when you're outside looking at plants, you don't ever see fungus gnats. And that's because they have a lot of natural predators. Um, a lot of other things like to eat fungus gnats, but also because the wind, the wind prevents them from being able to go too far and they have to be in places where the air is kind of stagnant. So indoors where we've got wet soil and stagnant air, it's a really nice place for fungus gnats to hang out. So if you open your windows or you just turn some fans on, usually that really makes a big dent on the fungus gnat population. And then the last tip that I have in terms of a solution that involves basically doing nothing is to move your fungus gnat infested plants into a space where they get a little bit of direct sunlight that touches the soil. I've noticed personally that my plants that I keep in areas where I only have grow lights and where they never see any direct sun, not even for a few minutes of the day, those are the only plants that actually get mold and then therefore get fungus gnats. My plants that I have that are closer to my window almost never have fungus gnats in them. Sunlight and the UV light specifically in sunlight is a really great antimicrobial and therefore antifungal agent and it really helps prevent the growth of mold. Like when you think about moldy places, it's always like a dark cave. Usually getting a couple minutes of sun um, every day for just a couple of days, few weeks, um, can really, really change a mold situation on a plant. So this isn't even just for fungus gnats. If you have plants that are growing mold all the time, I'll bet you they're in a location where they're not seeing any sun because my plants that are in the sun never get moldy. It's just the plants that I keep in shelves with grow lights where they never get any real sunlight. And most grow lights don't include the UV spectrum just because plants don't necessarily need UV light um, to grow and it's harmful to people. So we don't usually install light bulbs that emit UV. Okay, so while we're talking about treating mold as one possible way of preventing and treating a fungus gnat population, um, you can sprinkle cinnamon on the surface of your soil to eliminate mold. I have this cinnamon that I keep with my plant supplies that's separate from my kitchen cinnamon, but there's it's exactly the same. Like I got this at the grocery store and it's ground cinnamon and it's a natural antifungal. And so you can sprinkle this onto the surface of your soil. I know some people even mix cinnamon in with their soil mixture to try to prevent fungus. And I've noticed that it really does work wonders, especially on um, like gross slimy jars of propagation. Sometimes I'll even put this just in the water. So usually when we think of fungus gnats, we're thinking of the adult stage, the flying stage. And so a lot of the recommended treatment options for fungus gnats deals with catching and killing and eliminating the flying adult insects. So let's talk about some of those methods. Um, I've got here some yellow sticky traps. For all of these products, by the way, I will leave links to um, on my Amazon storefront. I'm not sure if these exact same sticky traps are available anymore because I bought these a really long time ago. Fungus gnats are really attracted to the color yellow and it's sticky paper and it just works by having the insects stick to it 
and then they die because they're trapped on the paper. I think a lot of times these are sold in the shape of like a little butterfly with the little triangle at the bottom that you could stick into your plant soil like kind of like a little like a little scarecrow um, but that catches the fungus gnats. Major greenhouses, nurseries, plant growers, um, indoor growers use sticky traps as more of an indicator of their pest population rather than an actual preventative method. It's mainly something that allows you to see how bad your population is. My recommendation if you want to use sticky yellow traps to have it be most effective when you're dealing with actively trying to control a population, I would get these sheets and what I do with it is cut out something that can lay flat on the surface of the soil and kind of cover up a lot of it. Doesn't need to be perfect, doesn't need to be great. And I just put it onto the surface of the soil and try not to move it around too much because it is gonna stick soil to the bottom of it and every place it's got a piece of dirt, it's gonna not be able to stick a bug. Um, but the reason I like to do it this way is because the fungus gnats want to get to the soil and they will land on it and it also prevents ones that are underneath from flying up and away and they get stuck to the bottom and sometimes the larvae, the little maggots that are crawling around in the surface of the soil also do get stuck to the bottom side of that sticky trap and so it can be really a lot more effective to lay them down on the surface of the soil rather than to stick them vertically where the fly has to fly into it. In my collection, personally, I tend not to use this. I think that they're not super effective um, in terms of getting rid of a population. They're kind of just, they're kind of just there all the time with dead gnats stuck to them. So I usually don't use sticky yellow traps. For some people, sticky yellow traps are their preferred method and can be totally good enough. Usually fungus gnats are not problematic enough to need anything more than sticky yellow traps to just catch an occasional adult flying around. Adult fungus gnats usually lay anywhere between 30 to 200 eggs. As soon as they find a good place to lay some eggs, they're gonna do it. So when you see fungus gnats flying around, take no prisoners, kill them on sight. Sticky yellow traps are especially good if you are squeamish about squishing fungus gnats with your hand. The main concern with the adult stage of fungus gnats besides them being a giant nuisance that try to fly up your nose and stuff like that is that they can potentially be a vector for certain plant diseases um, like pythium root rot and other types of um, bacterial or even viral problems with your plant. They can sometimes be transmitted by those adult fungus gnats flying from plant to plant, taking disease from the soil from one plant to another. And so that is really one of the reasons why you don't want to have a fungus gnat population that's really out of control. If you have a lot of plants and a lot of expensive plants and occasionally plants that have some kind of problem, fungus gnats might be the vector that spread disease all around your plant collection. So um, while they aren't necessarily directly harmful to your plants as pests that are going to eat the leaves, they can definitely be part of the ecosystem of problematic things that create issues for your plant collection. Always kill the adults on site. If you see them, smash them. So while we're talking about physical eradication methods, neem oil is another physical knockdown. Um, the way neem oil works is that it suffocates insects and it needs to come into contact with in a living insect and needs to coat it in order to kill it and in order to be effective. But just spraying neem oil when there are no insects present doesn't actually do anything. The same thing goes for insecticidal soap. It needs to come into physical contact with a living bug in order to kill it. It actually um, like disrupts their cell membranes and kind of dissolves them. I've seen some things saying to spray your plants down with insecticidal soap when you have fungus gnats and I hate to break it to you but this is probably going to be one of the least effective things for your fungus gnat treatment. Insecticidal soap isn't really going to help too much especially because it's mostly water and so when you're spraying insecticidal soap on your plant what you're doing is watering it. So I guess I don't know if I mentioned this but the most important thing about any spray treatments, any liquid treatments that you're going to apply to your plant for fungus gnats, you must wait until it's the watering day. Because in order to combat fungus gnats, one of the main things you want to do is make sure your plant soil is able to dry between waterings. You don't want to be spraying it with something thinking that you're treating for the pest because what you're really doing is keeping the soil moist and keeping the plant in an environment that's perfect for fungus gnats. I have also seen people recommending diatomaceous earth so diatomaceous earth is basically a very, very fine powder. When this physically gets onto insects, um, it kind of cuts up their bodies 
and gets in their little tiny joints and it kind of cuts them to death, like death by a million little paper cuts and they get totally dehydrated and they die. And um, this is something that people use to spray into beehives, wasp nests. It's also used in animal feed for digestive health. Um, I think it actually people eat this too for some digestive properties. Um, basically, it's totally organic, but the main thing about it is that it's really, really, really dangerous to inhale. Um, in the same way that it cuts up bugs, it will really mess up your lungs if you inhale this in a large quantity. So if you're going to be using this product, I recommend wearing a mask. I hold my breath when I spray this and actually I feel nervous about using this because I, I'm asthmatic and I feel like diatomaceous earth is just kind of scary. Um, to have, especially if I open my window and there's gusts of air and I know it's blowing around in my apartment. I actually kind of stay away from diatomaceous earth. The way this could be used as a fungus gnat treatment is that you can coat the surface of the soil in this and it will prevent fungus gnats from reaching the soil, it will prevent the larva from emerging from the soil, and it will cut up the little larva. Um, and if it gets on any fungus gnats, it will kill them by getting into their little joints and dehydrating them and cutting them up to death. I actually most commonly spray diatomaceous earth into my plants that I know have millipedes because this gets them. I put it on the surface of the soil and then I bottom water those plants and when the millipedes come to the top, they get into the diatomaceous earth and they die. Um, so most of my orchids have some of this in their top because it also kills snails. So that's kind of why I don't like to use the diatomaceous earth. It like pops everywhere. It can be kind of out of control sometimes. You're not supposed to put this much on the soil. I accidentally like squirted out way too much of it. Um, but you do want to kind of entirely coat the surface. What you also could apply to the surface of the soil, which is totally organic and non-harmful to people and pets, is you can coat the soil with a layer of sand. And what that does is it prevents adult flies from being able to reach the soil and it prevents any larvae that have hatched in the soil from being able to emerge to the surface and they die. Because once the eggs do hatch, the bugs need to be able to come out. And so if there's a layer of sand on the top, usually the larva can't get through it. And so that can stop the larva from emerging. But that is also a solution that is a little bit harder to maintain because over time sand works its way to the bottom because it's a really fine particle. It's actually really aesthetic if you are the kind of person who is willing to upkeep applying sand to the surface of your plants. I feel like that would look really cool. So that's a really good option. I unfortunately don't have any sand, but I, just wrote myself a little note that says sand on it to remember to mention it. Whew, talking so much. Okay, so let's get through the rest of the stuff I have here. So basically I'm saving my most effective methods for the end. Um, if you're impatient, it's hydrogen peroxide and these mosquito bits, which I will talk about. Um, but let's first just talk about the last few things that I think are probably not a really good method for treating fungus gnats. Um, so this, this is a huge bottle of a systemic insecticide which treats pests that feed on the plant material in order to live, like mealybugs, aphids, thrips, um, pests that eat the plant as their main source of food. You can use a systemic insecticide like this houseplant granule that gets absorbed into the plant and when pests eat the plant material, it kills them. So that's called a systemic because it infiltrates the entire system. And it's different than like a physical knockdown that like kills the living thing by touching it. This kills them by poisoning them, which is kind of different. This houseplant systemic is really effective on certain houseplant infestations, but Fungus gnats don't eat the plant tissue. I mean, sometimes the larvae eat the rotten roots, but they don't eat the living part of the plant. So this actually doesn't really help with fungus gnats. Although I would guess that there maybe are some non-intended effects where it dissolves into the soil and is then present in the mold and then kills them that way, but that's not how this is meant to be used. So I don't consider this to be a fungus gnat treatment. If you're treating for fungus gnats alone, I really wouldn't opt for this type of houseplant systemic, mainly because it's pretty toxic to the environment. It's very harmful to pollinators, to invertebrates, to fish, birds. So this is something that's not super safe to use. And because it's not actually 
a recommended treatment for fungus gnats, I just wouldn't opt for this um, as a fungus gnat treatment. There are lots of other things that you can use that target fungus gnats directly or aren't so harmful to potentially beneficial insects as well. This is something that you might be using for other pests, but for fungus gnats alone, I would say choose something other than this. In general, if you cannot use products that kill lots of different things and if you can opt for something that is targeting the problem more specifically, it's always better to choose something that can work more specifically. I just pulled another systemic insecticide here. This is Captain Jack's dead bug. So Captain Jack's dead bug is also an insecticide that works by being consumed by the pests. And so when they eat it, it creates a problem for them. This particular one ultimately like paralyzes the bugs. It messes with their nervous system and their muscles and it it ultimately results in their death. And so this is a residual insecticide, which means that when you spray this on a plant, it doesn't necessarily get absorbed. I think there is a little bit of absorption, but it sits on the surface of the plant leaves and when bugs eat it, they die. Um, and it can sit there residually and stay active for quite some time while it is still present physically on the surface of the leaf. But also, like the other systemic insecticide that we were just talking about, since fungus gnats don't eat the plant tissue, this doesn't really have that much of an effect on them. You can spray this in the soil and it will go onto the soil and you might have some residual effect where the mold gets contaminated with this and when fungus gnats eat it, they die. And I do think that introducing some of this Spinosad or Captain Jack's dead bug into your soil will affect their population, but I think that it's unnecessary. So usually when we when we talk about pest control, you wanna go for the least drastic action you can possibly take that will still be effective because it's dangerous to use chemicals. Even if things are derived from something organic, there's a lot of organic things that are really toxic. Like, a, you know, a lot of our poisons, the most toxic things come from nature. For any insecticide that works by being ingested, pests can develop a resistance to it over time. And I've got so much to say about pest control. I think I'm gonna have to make way more episodes, but basically you don't really wanna opt for a really strong pesticide or something that is going to knock out a lot of different types of living things if you can help it because sometimes you develop resistance and if you're going for something as weak as fungus gnats, it just doesn't really make sense to bring out your biggest guns. Do unnecessary damage potentially and um, it just never really makes sense to use a really strong insecticide if you don't have to. Fungus gnats are so weak, they're so easy to kill, that you don't really need to be adding broad spectrum poisons into your plant. Okay, and then I have here some apple cider vinegar, and this is not something that you should use to treat fungus gnats. This bottle of apple cider vinegar, which I bought a while ago to use as a fungus gnat trap, because I read online that apple cider vinegar was a great thing to use to trap fungus gnats. You just put it in some little cups and you leave them out and it will attract the gnats and they drown in here. If you put a little soap in there too, they just fall right in and they die. And that would be really great if it were true that fungus gnats were attracted to apple cider vinegar. But actually, fungus gnats are not attracted to vinegar. Fruit flies are attracted to vinegar. So fruit flies are also called vinegar flies or vinegar gnats. Um, and it's because they're really attracted to this stuff. So fruit flies, while they do belong to the same order, Diptera, they are not one of the families that are considered fungus gnats. They're not actually attracted to the fungus as much, but more to rotting fruit. So they are attracted to this vinegar smell, but fungus gnats actually are not. And I noticed when I first started trying to use this method that it was not very effective and that I caught more fungus gnats in my tea than I did in the vinegar. And that's because actually fungus gnats aren't attracted to this. And I think that there's a little bit of confusion between fruit flies and fungus gnats. They're really not the same. Fruit flies actually are one singular species. Drosera melanogaster. Is that right? Drosera melanogaster? Yeah, I think, I think so. I'm trying to remember from my 
elementary school science days when we would breed fruit flies. They're used as a model organism to understand genetics. So we talk about fruit flies a lot, but they are not the same as fungus gnats. So fruit flies have no interest in your plants and the fungus gnats don't really have interest in your fruit. I mean, they maybe do if it starts to get moldy um, and it's like wet enough, but usually they're pretty separate things, even though they can look kind of similar at first. Yeah, apple cider vinegar, this isn't gonna do you any good for your fungus gnats. I mean, it might work a little bit, but they're not, the fungus gnats are not known to be attracted to this. So it's kind of just like a coincidence if they fall in here, they're mainly just attracted to the moisture. Let's move on to the treatments that I actually am going to use for my fungus gnats. Hydrogen peroxide for certain situations and mosquito bits for most of the time. The hydrogen peroxide is a contact killer and the mosquito bits are going to be a little bit more of a systemic. Hydrogen peroxide will kill fungus gnat eggs and larvae and pupa that are in the soil. Um, it'll kill the adults too if you can manage to drench them somehow, but if you water your plants with hydrogen peroxide, it will kill any living eggs or larvae um, that are in there. You can get a hydrogen peroxide solution from the grocery store, convenience store, um, and it is usually sold as a 3% solution, which means that it is 3% hydrogen peroxide and the rest is water. You can actually take this straight hydrogen peroxide solution and pour it right into your plant soil. Higher concentrations of hydrogen peroxide can do damage to the plant tissue, but 3% hydrogen peroxide isn't going to cause you any problems. So if I notice that one of my plants has like a lot of these little silver looking little bugs crawling around in the surface of the soil, usually those are fungus gnats. Um, the fungus gnat larvae look like these little tiny silver bugs that kind of like slither around on the top of the soil. And if I notice that, I just pour hydrogen peroxide on it and it kills all the bugs. So hydrogen peroxide is harmful to animals um, and things that have animal cells. Um, but plants are not as affected by hydrogen peroxide because they have cell walls. So one of the major differences between plants and animals or plant cells and animal cells is that plant cells have a cell wall that's made up of cellulose um, and is really a protective, sturdy, rigid um, boundary between the inside of the plant cell, which is vulnerable, and the outside world. But animal cells don't have cell walls, we just have these membranes. And so in a lot of ways, animals are much more fragile than plants because they don't have this thick outer layer. And so hydrogen peroxide works by dissolving cell membranes and it kind of like melts stuff. So the way hydrogen peroxide works is that it's got two hydrogens and two oxygens. It will undergo a chemical reaction which um, will steal electrons from anything that it can. It's highly reactive and in that process, it kind of like melts the things that it steals electrons from. Um, but in that electron stealing process, hydrogen peroxide molecules will split into a water molecule and into an oxygen molecule. This is advanced chemistry here, but anyway, we're left with these two separate ingredients that are both totally okay for plants, water and oxygen. So hydrogen peroxide is something that you can use to help oxygenate the root system by just pouring it into plant soil and it creates water and oxygen for the plant roots and it's, it's perfect, plants love this stuff. Um, but you don't need to use it at a 3% solution, you can dilute this a lot further. One part hydrogen peroxide, four parts water will be plenty strong to kill any fungus gnat eggs and larvae that are in the soil. So what you can do is get some hydrogen peroxide, you can mix it up with all of your water that you're going to use to water your plants and just water all of your plants with a hydrogen peroxide solution when it's watering day and that will kill any fungus gnats that are in the soil. So hydrogen peroxide is really great and it's beneficial for the plants because it oxygenates their root system. If you are in a situation where you notice that some of your plant pots are like crawling with fungus gnat larvae or what you suspect might be fungus gnat larvae, like little tiny silvery looking little bugs, I actually would recommend that before you do the hydrogen peroxide drench, if you can, to just get a little spoon and scrape off the surface of the soil and just get rid of it. Um, because a lot of times that means that's where the eggs are and if you just change out the top layer of soil on plants that you think have fungus gnats, a lot of times you're disposing of a lot of eggs. But like a lot of the other things that we did talk about, hydrogen peroxide is a physical knockdown. So it has to come into contact with those eggs and fungus gnat larvae in order to kill them. And once the bubbling is done, it's done working. And so it's not gonna like be a residual that stays in the soil and continues to work. It only works right when you put it in. So 
Um, if you have a large population of fungus gnats flying around, watering with hydrogen peroxide isn't going to kill the eggs that the fungus gnat's going to lay, you know, a couple hours later. So for that, I use this product called Mosquito Bits, and this is really popular. This is a product that specifically targets diptera, targets certain types of flies, like mosquitoes and fungus gnats. It is a really, really safe, naturally occurring bacteria that really only targets very few types of things. So the active ingredient in here is something called Bacillus thuringiensis, which gets abbreviated to BT, which is why I think the common name is Mosquito Bits, because it's like, BT. So this is Bacillus thuringiensis subspecies Israelensis, I believe. Israelensis. Yeah. So BTI is what it's abbreviated as. And this particular subspecies targets the little flies, mosquitoes, and gnats. Um, but the other main type of BT that you can find is called BTK, Bacillus thuringiensis. Uh, Shoot, I can't remember what the K stands for. That is a type of BT that targets caterpillars and um, like the tobacco hornworms and gypsy moths and other types of horticultural pests that tend to eat your vegetables and things like that. This BTI, the subspecies Israelensis, is not going to be effective on the caterpillars and the caterpillar subspecies, the BTK is not going to work on your fungus gnats. So if you are trying to use this to treat fungus gnats, you want to make sure that you're getting the right one. Um, but anyone that says that it's for mosquitoes is going to be the appropriate one to use. So both of these forms are BTI to treat fungus gnats and mosquitoes, um, but they're just slightly different delivery mechanisms. They've got this Bacillus thuringiensis bacterium inside and when they dissolve or get wet it releases this bacteria and when the fungus gnats eat things with the bacteria it eventually kills them so it's a little bit slower than a physical knockdown because it takes some time the the bacteria needs to disperse and then they need to be consumed and then it does take a little bit of time for it to kill the fungus gnats this particular type are these like little foam pellets and the way you're supposed to use this, it says that you're supposed to completely cover the surface of the soil, like entirely with a thick layer. And when you water the plant, they get wet and the bacteria seeps into the soil. Um, but I've noticed that this gets really moldy and gross when you put it on the surface of the soil. So some people recommend just like mixing it into their potting solution or not putting that much of it. Or you can kind of like make like a tea with it, like steep it in some water or put it into your watering can and let it soak for a little bit before you water your plants with this solution. But I decided to try to use this um, other product, this other version of it that turns into a powder because I don't like the way these look on the surface of my soil. They just get moldy and they never fully dissolve. I'm trying this other product for the first time ever. So we're going to try this together. So it's got the directions on the back, these mosquito dunks. And it says to use one dunk for a hundred square feet of surface area, which is a lot. So I probably won't even use a full dunk for watering my entire collection. So out of all the different treatments, this BT alone should be enough to completely eradicate your fungus gnat population. Because if you fill your soil with the bacteria that poisons fungus gnats, they just can't do it. They won't have anywhere to live. So what I'm going to do to treat my collection, because I've been having a lot of fungus gnats recently, is just for the next, you know, one or two times I water my plants, I'm going to make sure that I always water with a solution that has some of this stuff in it. I've never touched one of these before um, or like seen what the consistency is like. So <laughs> we're going to find out. just borrow this saucer for a minute. Oh, it breaks up pretty easily. I've got this gallon of water here, which I was using to water some plants earlier, and I'm just going to put some of this in there. This is like, I don't know, not that much. Kind of crumbling it. You can hear it kind of bubbling and dissolving. Great. So now I'm just going to water some of these plants with this because I all my plants are thirsty. It's watering day for like all of them. 
and now I know they're getting a little bit of fungus net treatment too when I pour this in there. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I really hope that you found this informative. I really tried to rack my brains to think of everything I had to say about fungus gnats. So if you watched this far, thank you for listening to me talk for this long. I feel like I've been just like speaking for hours. So <laughs> thank you for hanging in there. If you have any of your own solutions for how you deal with fungus gnats or disagree with any of my treatment methods or things that I said about your solutions that you use for fungus gnats, please share. Um, like if you find that neem oil works really well for fungus gnats, I would love to hear from you about that because I found that it doesn't seem to help me too much. Um, or if there's some like magic chemical or something like that that you like to use, um, please share your experience. Um, oh, that reminds me. There are also these little UV gnat catching machines that are um, like mosquito machines. Anything that's used to trap mosquitoes is probably going to be something effective against fungus gnats as well. So I know that people use those little machines that have like a little UV light and a fan that sucks in the fungus gnats when they get close. And I've heard some really good things about those machines. I know that some people have had really great success with that. If you use one of these methods and find it extremely effective or ineffective or have some other DIY solution, please do share. I really hope that this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for being here and, and for watching and for supporting me and for sharing your love of plants. And yeah, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you're having a fantastic week and that your plants are bringing you joy. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye. This is the Diffenbachia camo that I showed in my last plant rescue video. Um, it's it's doing okay, it hasn't done anything. I'm definitely going to water this in with some of my fungus net mosquito bits solution um, now that it's dry and ready for a watering.